That's right, Tana Mojo just did a Chili's mukbang with her buddy Shane Dawson, Ryland Adams, as well as Morgan. And there's something that you probably missed from that video, and no, I'm not talking about the boofing. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, make sure you follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. I have been announcing different things about my new book coming out, Rewire Your Anxiety, and I'm giving away a bunch of free copies. So follow me on social media. Yeah, it's good times, all right? So yeah, anyways, I was just chilling. I saw that Tana Mojo uploaded her video with Shane Dawson and Ryland and Morgan, and I was like, huh, let's check it out. Let's see, let's see what's going on and what these guys talk about, and oh my God, like, <laughs> I was like reading through the comments and stuff like that, and aside from all the comments about boofing and stuff, like, a lot of people were like, I couldn't even understand what they were saying. But anyways, there was a few things from this video that I think um, a lot of us can learn from just as the viewers, right? Like, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of if you're like consuming this content on YouTube, like don't just passively watch it, like try to see what we can take away from it. So first there was this clip right here. So she came to me and she said, hey, I want to do a sociopath test with Jake and I want you to come in and surprise him and like read the questions like Dr. Phil. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's iconic. I would literally, of course I would do that. But then I started thinking about it, I'm like, well, people are already mad at me about the sociopath stuff. And I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get involved in that again. But I was like, well, but it's you and Jake, so it's like, you know, maybe one of you has it. So <laughs> technically, it would be a good thing. Maybe. I think everybody has something. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's nuts. Oh, I would say That's at least two true. per person. Like even my like hating myself and depression, all this stuff, I'm like, oh, there's probably a name for this. I should figure it out. <laughs> so the video went well. And yeah, so <laughs> I think it's good, you know, Shane Dawson learning and being like, no, I'm gonna stay away from this thing, like Tana Mojo and Jake Paul doing this whole like sociopath test and everything like that. By the way, this is something that, that was really interesting when I watched this video because obviously Tana Mojo had the whole TanaCon thing. Shane Dawson got some pushback for his Jake Paul series in the very beginning when he was talking about the sociopath thing. But like, this is what I'm always trying to teach people. And this is something that I've had to learn as well is like, we're gonna screw up. We're gonna make a lot of mistakes. But the goal is to learn from those things. But anyways, what I wanted to point out when Shane Dawson was talking about how like, we all have something wrong with us, right? There's all of us, you know? And he shared some of his own experience. But like, he actually mentioned this in the, I think the first episode of the In the Mind of Jake Paul series, right? Where like, there's something going on with like YouTubers. Like, who's gonna put themselves on camera in front of the world? Like, if there isn't something a little bit wrong. And like, this is like true, right? And here's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about mental health, so passionate about changing the way we talk about mental health. Like, mental health does not mean a lack of mental illness. So obviously there's the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for diagnosable mental illnesses, but even that manual, it is not like a surefire thing, right? Like the only reason that manual exists is so when you see a mental health professional or a doctor and you start talking about the symptoms, the things that you're going through, like they can kind of narrow it down and say, okay, maybe you're struggling with this disorder and here's how you treat it. But the thing is, is that you do not need a specific mental illness to work on your mental health, right? Like imagine if you only worked on your physical health, right? If something was wrong, if you only exercised, if you got diagnosed with a disease, if you only ate healthy foods, if you got diagnosed something, right? So my question is, why do we do that with our mental health? Like you don't need to have major depressive disorder. You don't need to be a sociopath. You don't need to have narcissistic personality disorder. You don't have to have those things to treat those things, right? Like most people go through bouts of depression. Most people go through bouts of having anxiety, especially with like life changes and things like that happening. So we need to be proactive and work on these things, right? And that actually transitions into the next thing I wanna talk about, which is something that was mentioned a few times in this video was like Shane Dawson talking about like how they don't hang out as much and he doesn't show up to things. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. You're not 21 yet? Yeah, I'm 21. I thought it's already called. So when's your party? Are, are we cool enough to be invited to? You know what's funny is I have this whole thing where I'm like, I'm not going to invite them because they're not going to show up. But I could <laughs> just I invite no you so that you, oh my god, Rylan, will you come and like boof some with me? Whoa. Like, is that baby going to be there? Yeah, so, baby has so many better things. Boofy, so boofy, better boofy, So boofy. what are you doing? Oh, boofy. The party. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you guys living for. I didn't know that she was in contact with people and not hiding in the mansion. And this is probably like one of the biggest questions that I get, right? I get this question all the time about dealing with social anxiety and not wanting to hang out with people. And this is actually something I talk about in Rewire Your Anxiety. Like, it's so important to understand that anxiety and depression they intertwine and when we isolate and we don't hang out with friends and we don't get that kind of social interaction it can actually fuel our depression and anxiety and this is based off of evolutionary psychology because when we were hunters and gatherers and traveling around in tribes like our body was giving us a warning like yo you need to get back with people right because if you were out wandering in the woods by yourself you can get attacked by an animal you can like get hurt maybe you eat some bad berries or something like that so the body will make you sad it'll start making you anxious because it's saying look get back to the tribe now many of us are in a situation like Shane Dawson might be right where we're in a relationship and we have a certain uh, you know amount of friends that hang out with us but we don't hang out as much with other friends. And this is something that I can definitely relate to. Like I have a very small friend group and I have a lot of acquaintances, but here's my suggestion and you could take it or leave it, all right? But like I get anxiety, I, I get anxiety being in large crowds and sometimes I just don't wanna go out and things like that. But one of the issues is that when we say no and we turn things down, people stop inviting us, right? And then we get into this thought trap where we say no to hanging out because of our anxiety or because of our depression and then people stop inviting us and then our brain starts telling us that nobody likes us but the reality is is that people stop inviting us because we keep turning them down like none of us like being rejected nobody likes being rejected so the suggestion i have what i try to do is when I don't feel like hanging out, if I'm, you know, just, you know, having one of my, you know, funks or if my anxiety's, you know, going and I turn somebody down, something that I always try to make sure that I do is thank that person for offering it, right? I always make sure they know that I am very appreciative. Then the next thing I do is I say, hey, next time you guys are doing something, let me know and I'll try to hang out. But the caveat to that is, we actually make an effort to go hang out the next time. See, something I had to realize myself about my own anxiety and being uncomfortable is, it's not always about me, right? Like, a lot of us live in this kind of selfish, self-centered way. And again, if you're new to my channel, I'm not talking about Shane Dawson necessarily. I'm talking about all of us and what I've learned from my experience, okay? So I'm not saying like Shane Dawson, selfish, self-centered and stuff, but we need to look at our own lives, right? Like sometimes we just have to hang out. Like we just gotta do it. Maybe we're not in the mood or anything like that, but we do it anyways because our friends wanna see us. Our family wants to see us. They wanna hang out with us. You know what I mean? But. Shane Dawson specifically, he does a bunch of like collabs and hops in other people's videos and things like that. And like, we need to just do this every now and again because we need to maintain our social connections. Like today, I, I had the opportunity, like one of my best friends who I grew up with, like he just had a baby and I was able to go hang out with him. And like, since we've got older, we're both parents now and everything like that, we don't hang out all the time. But today I was able to go out and hang out with him for the first time in probably the last month or so, you know what I mean? But there comes a certain point where we have to get up and just get out of our comfort zone and do things. Because something I've learned a lot about with my own mental health, and I've seen it for other people too, is it's not as much about what we want to do, but it's what we need to do. You know what I mean? And something we need to do is get out, be social, and talk to other people and hang out with other people. So the last thing I wanna talk about, just real quick, real quick little side note here, right, was the whole Janicon thing. Like, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> that sounds like the worst idea ever. Like, while Jake Paul does have like a bigger team and it might be better organized and everything like that, like, that would not go well. What's crazy, the craziest thing to me is, they would probably sell that thing out 
in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? But that seems like the worst idea. Like, she needs to move on, just go to VidCon, you know, they forgave her, you know, she forgives them, and they're friends again. Just don't try to throw your own thing again. You know what I mean? But anyways, Let's have a conversation down in the comments below. Let me know if you struggle with isolating, not wanting to hang out with people. Can you relate to the thought trap that I was talking about where you keep telling people no and then your brain starts to tell you that people just don't like hanging out with you? Let's have a conversation down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And while you're at it, don't forget, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. And I I want to send a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you want access to all of my books for free, just sign up for Patreon. It's pretty cool. Click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.